Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barrongo e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two in Seri. In the news tonight, 53,000 calls received through child helpline since 2015. Shortage of albacore affects PAFCO. And filling vacant chiefly titles a concern. From the studios of FBC Suba. Fisheries Minister Semi Koroi Lavisau admits that the shortage of albacore tuna supply has been an ongoing issue. He says while it's unfortunate that the Pacific Fishing Company had to reduce its operations to a four-day working week, the ministry is doing all it can to ensure this sector remains sustainable. Maggie Boyle reports. The shortage of albacore tuna for PAFCO has been a constant struggle. There is a worldwide shortage of the albacore species. <clears throat> As a consequence, uh, albacore supply to PEFCO has also declined. The Fisheries Ministry says they're aware of the issue. Previously, about two years ago, uh, this had happened, and uh, basically the previous occasion, uh, PEFCO had to close down. Uh, for an interim period to allow the stock to come back uh, into their storage. The minister adding they're doing all they can to ensure supply is normalized soon. In, in negotiating with our uh, island neighbors up to north to give us easy access, uh, preferential uh, licensing fee, that has been ongoing for the last year. Uh, it's basically need to be tied up and then uh, have uh, agreements with those countries, mainly Kiribati, Tuvalu, Solomons and Vanuatu. PAFCO over the last nine weeks now have reduced operations with only 60 metric tons of tuna processed daily, half of the required amount for full operations. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Since its inception in 2015, the child helpline so far has received close to 53,000 calls. Medical Services Pacific confirms the calls were received from children and adults, asking for assistance and support for the situations they were in. The child helpline 1325 is administered by the Ministry of Women, Children and Poverty Alleviation in partnership with Medical Services Pacific. Kritika Kumar reports. This year, the child helpline has received close to 7,500 genuine calls. Uh, main issues that were reported by these children, child abuse, child neglect, physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, gender-based violence, and violence in home. So when we say violence in home, it's, it's actually one of the most... Uh, pervasive human rights challenges of our time. Parents need to create a positive environment for the well-being of their children. When a child is exposed to violence in his or her own home, they are denied their right to a safe and a healthy environment. Meanwhile, more than 3,000 child abuse and neglect cases have been recorded by the Child Services Unit in the past two years. We are hoping that our parents and our caregivers and uh, uh, those out there can provide a safe environment for our children. We believe that if the home is safe, then the children is safe. And to do this, we need to invest in them as well. According to the Child Services Unit, in the last two years, out of the 3,061 cases, 29% of the cases were of child neglect. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The vacant chiefly titles in most provinces across the country hinders the progress of development in Itauke communities. While officiating at the Dakaundrove Provincial Council meeting in Yaroi village Savu Savu earlier this week, Itauke Affairs Permanent Secretary Meletim Bainimarama said there is a need to fill these vacant positions as soon as possible. Sanyani Boiler reports. <laughs> The vacant chiefly positions in villages creates a gap in terms of provincial developments. The Ministry of Itoke Affairs will continue to 
reiterate the importance of maintaining the chiefly titles in our traditional settings and this is one of the factors that hinders our progress and the Ministry of Itoke Affairs will try its utmost best to address the gap. The Kambrabe Provincial Administrator Setereki Tuimboda says developments in place for the province includes the construction of new police stations and health centers to name a few. Tawake Health Center will soon be developed. For the new Tawake Police Post, it will be built once the Nandi Police Post is done. We are focusing on building a new police post in Naweni as well. Timbother says most of the developments in the province will begin next year. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Repairing burn power poles is becoming an expensive exercise for the Energy Fiji Limited. Chief Executive Hasmuk Patel says this is not only affecting EFL but the economy as well. He says with Christmas just a few weeks away, they don't want any disruption to businesses. Patel says this is primarily an issue in the Cane Belt area of the Western Division. It costs hundreds of thousands of dollars you know, to, to the economy because customers do not have power supply, they're not able to conduct their business. And as far as EFL is concerned, we have to replace the power poles and uh, the, the infrastructure that has been damaged. Up ahead, RFMF commander visits peacekeepers and 55 students receive FHEC accredited certificates. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Commander of the Republic of Fiji Military Forces, Rear Admiral William Enalpoto, began his interview visit to deployed soldiers on peacekeeping duties in the Middle East. Admiral Naupoto visited the Republic of Fiji military troops serving with the United Nations Assistance Mission in Iraq, based in Baghdad, where he spent two days. Naupoto was shown the areas that came under the Fijian peacekeepers' responsibility and was briefed on the contemporary military issues facing the troops. Prior to this, the commander visited the United Arab Emirates. We had military-to-military -military bilateral discussions with the UAE Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces. He will next visit Fiji's troops serving with the Multinational Force and Observer Mission in the Sinai Peninsula and conclude his Middle East tour with the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force in occupied Golan. Fifty-five young men and women yesterday graduated with Fiji High Education Commission accredited certificates from two youth training centres in Vanua Levu. The accreditation means they can apply to further their training at any tertiary institution. Eleanor Trangaivu reports. These 55 graduates now have a bright future ahead of them. After completing 10 months of theory and practical work, they are graduating with Level 4 Certificate in Organic Agriculture and level three certificate in carpentry. Your future doesn't end here, dear students. Your future begins here. The 55 graduates, 13 from the Nalamba Youth Training Center in Lambasa and 22 from the Nangera Youth Training Center in Savo Savo, now have the option to continue the learning at any tertiary institution or enter the workforce. With what you have achieved, and what you are going to graduate with is going to open ways and avenues and means of going further. 30 year old Saviriong Gilatambu dropped out of school over a decade ago. Apart from graduating with a level 3 certificate in carpentry, he also took out the best practical award. Now I can look for a job and my long-term plan is to start my own construction company. This is the first ever lot of graduates from the two youth training centers in Vanua Levu to have Fiji Higher Education accredited certificates. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News.
Signs and media needs to work closely with each other in order to address the global concern over ocean health. Dr. Laura Lorenzoni, a program scientist for ocean biology and biogeochemistry program at NASA, says while research is important in addressing climatic issues in the Pacific, it becomes purposeless if it's not deconstructed for public consumption. She adds the media plays a critical role in ensuring the public understands research materials on how their livelihoods will be affected if global warming continues. Why should they care about, you know, whether the ocean is getting more acidic? What's in it for them? So you have to, and why should they, you know, use, not use single-use plastics? I mean, why? What's, so once you start putting um, some of the issues that scientists have been looking at in context of, well, this is, this is your livelihood. This is, this is how you and your children are going to be impacted. The careless disposal of rubbish in Barotura is a major concern for the Waterways Ministry. While officiating at the commissioning of the new Barotu Foot Cross, Minister Responsible Dr. Mahindra Reddy says this is a major cause of block drains and flooding in the area. Dr. Reddy says villagers should ensure that rubbish is disposed of safely to ensure that their environment is free from diseases. He adds the ministry is working to ensure that Fijians are safe and lives and live, sorry, a healthy life. Rules in this village to ensure that no one disposes rubbish like that. You can't, you can't live in this environment when there's rubbish thrown. The rubbish thrown there not only blocks the waterways, doesn't look good, but it also <coughs> will threat your health, health of your children. You need to ensure that you protect your environment. And coming up in sports, Fijiana 15's creates history. And Sevens legend steps down as Russia coach. This and more after the break. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's what? My name is Rajni Taleta and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are listening to Mirchi FM. We are in Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Leading sports tonight, history has been created by the Fijiana 15s at Churchill Park in Lautoka after securing their place at the 2021 Rugby World Cup in New Zealand. It will be the first time the Fijiana will feature at the World Cup after beating Samoa Manusina 41 this afternoon. The Fijiana led 24-8 at halftime with three converted tries and a penalty. They added another three tries in the second spell to seal the win. The 2019 Girls National Provincial Rugby Championship has been hailed as a success. Two new teams completed this year and one of them is determined to get more girls involved in their island. Aquila Dama has the details. Ovalo is pleased to be part of their first girls NPC and they are determined to be back next year. We hope that uh, uh, the, the, the men folk in the, on the island will support uh, girls in uh, playing rugby f in the future and come forward and help with the coaching and uh, uh, when we ask uh, for girls to play rugby if uh, they could uh, look at that as a new initiative for developing sports on the island. Vindali is personally attached to rugby now just after three years of being involved. I've seen how the game has helped me at home uh, with uh, conversing, the counseling of my children and them taking up something that they love and uh, making friends in the sports field. And as for me, from 2016 to today, I really like how the sports has developed further from uh, tag rugby to now contact. Some talents were also uncovered at the tournament in the last two days. 
I think we are unearthing a number of uh, good upcoming talents. Uh, I've seen a number of 14 and 15 year old girls playing for uh, the Namosi under 19 team. Uh, I know for 14, 15 year old playing under 19 level uh, with really good skill sets is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is a testament to the development work that is happening in, in the rural areas. The tournament is hosted in partnership with Fiji Rugby and Oceania Rugby's Get Into Rugby program with funding support from UN Women. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Rugby Sevens legend Waisale Sarevi has stepped down as Russia's Sevens coach. Sarevi took up the coaching job exactly a year ago. In a Facebook post, the Sevens wizard announced the news, saying he's grateful and always thanking God for his plans and calling through all the years. Sarevi said he stepped down as the head coach on Thursday and is happy to have brought the team for training and play in Fiji, and they had a wonderful time. Australian Sevens coach Tim Walsh has confirmed he is talking to Samu Kerevi about taking a shot at the 2020 Olympic team. The Crusaders have opted to keep their name after a formal review launched in response to the Christchurch terror attack in March. However, the Super Rugby champions have dropped all reference to their medieval Crusaders replacing the knight and sword with the new Maori design. This Former Fiji Under-20 Rugby Centre Likena Vundongo has made the Brisbane Broncos 2020 final NRL squad. The 20-year-old was signed by the Broncos earlier this year, but has not made it to the NRL. Vundongo starred for Fiji at last year's World Rugby Under-20s trophy in Romania, where he was named player of the tournament. The Broncos named Vundongo in their 2020 NRL squad yesterday. Cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Taking a look at the map, in the west, fine apart from possible isolated afternoon or evening showers. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, cloudy periods with brief showers. And up north, fine apart from afternoon or evening showers. At sea, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, the next high tide is tonight at 10.41 with high tide at 4.06 tomorrow morning. Sunrise will be at 6.21. And looking at tomorrow's isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. And as for Monday, brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Recapping the main stories for tonight, 53,000 calls received through child helplines since 2015. Shortage of albacore affects PAFCO and filling vacant chiefly titles a concern. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, do you think the color coding of taxi number plates will stop illegal operations? Visit our FBC website to answer. And you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, our Twitter page at FBC underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I stay safe. Good night. Anguela o veteranugo, agora está boa. Agora do talento ainda na barrão e na bola FM, na mão do Anacer. Bola, Angola, ele toca do talento que na bola FM, ele tem na mão do Anacer. Nem bola vem cá, na regenga o sam bola FM na, é na casa. Na regenga o sam do ativo na bola FM, na mão do Anacer no sul. Nem bola vem cá, na regenga o Jerry, é o meu lampasa. Ando barrão e na bola FM. Bula FM, nombor 2 NSR.